Hi there, this is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films and welcome to another random review. Today we're going back to 1933, pre-Hayes Code, and it's James Whale's The Kiss Before the Mirror. And this is indicator number 388. This is one of their recent releases. It has a running time of 69 minutes, but don't put that, don't let that put you off. Um, it's 69 minutes that are crammed full of goodness and again proves the point that films don't need to be 133 minutes long or 116 minutes long sometimes you can make an excellent little film at 69 minutes long now this isn't you know James Whale is famous for his classic universal horror films this isn't a horror film even though it does have some horror elements um, the film starts with a woman walking through a wood, which is obviously a set, with thin trees and wild diagonal clouds in the sky. Um, she comes across a black cat and she is illicitly sneaking in um, to the home of her lover, played by Walter Pigeon. Um, and then we see a man going down the same path and then as it's obvious she's going into the bedroom to prepare for some coital activity you can tell this is pre-code um, but we'll get to that later the man that's been following her shoots her through the window goes into the house and phones the police not only does he shoot her once he shoots her twice when she's obviously on the ground. And then we're introduced to a lawyer played by the Wizard of Oz himself, Frank Morgan, because before he was a wizard, um, he was a lawyer. And he is the friend of this doctor who has, we find out, has shot his wife. And it's his job to defend him. Um, but then as he tries to find out why his friend has murdered his wife as details come out about the mirror um, Frank Morgan starts to suspect his own wife of having an affair and are we going to see history repeat itself again it's 69 minutes it's so well done so well paced um, lots of wonderful imagery in it it may contain some cinema firsts um, I don't have but accurate information but the, the title card which plays over the image of a mirror and um, two little porcelain figures of a couple as the male is trying to kiss the female and the female is turning away um, which is pretty much the story of the film the Blue Danube is playing so I don't know whether this is the first example of a film using the Blue Danube um, and also at one point in the film you have the image of somebody looking into a broken mirror which obviously Michael Powell used a few times and it's kind of um, a trope that has been used many, many times in cinema. So again, I don't know whether that's the first use of it by James Whale in 1933. Um, you know, again, in somebody else's hands, this might have been a kind of dry melodrama, but James Whale makes it, you know, there's little gothic elements in some of his shots but there's also a wonderful dark kind of perverse sense of humour that runs through the film 
Um, and obviously it's pre-code, so his female assistant, he's got a female assistant and um, an older male ass assistant who is um, always talked about as drinking too much. Um, but his female assistant, the way she's dressed, um, she is pretty much coded um, as a lesbian character. Um, you know, the, the glammed up women do kind of ask her questions and she does have um, wonderful answers. You know, the advantage of um, staying single means I won't be killed. Um, and obviously there has been countries where crimes of passion, people do get away with murdering people basically um, because of crimes of passion. Now usually it is a man killing a woman. I think, I'm not sure women killing men, they get away with that um, as much in the past in crimes of passion. So obviously women killing people um, is always seen as more shocking than men killing women because that's just almost um, not necessarily expected but you know men are expected to be more murderous than women. Um, but it's just wonderful to see Frank Morgan change as his suspicions of his own wife um, grow um, and we see that perhaps the same thing is going to play out. And again, the fact that the murderer in this case is a doctor and Frank Morgan is a lawyer, also before he became a wizard. You know, so we see it's men who are, you know, supposed to be intelligent and supposed to be kind of high up in society and they can be overtaken by jealousy and rage. Um, there's a lot of great stuff in the film and again it's just a perfect example of 69 minutes does not matter it's just so concise and so put, put so well put together um, that it's an absolute joy and I would highly recommend it. Um, obviously you get reversible artwork, you get a booklet, there's James Whale himself um, and there's interviews and lots of lovely images from the film as well. As far as extras there's a really entertaining commentary by film historian Nora Fior from 2023 because we all like some anecdotes about James Whale and there's plenty in the commentary. Um, a Shattered Reflection, which is a 12 minute wonderful piece on comparing The Kiss Before the Mirror to the 1938 remake that James Whale did. He wanted it re-released um, in 1936 and the studio said they'd have to cut so much out of it they ended up remaking it but it was a different script um, and this piece really shows the differences well between pre-code and post-code um, it moves from Vienna to an unnamed American city um, the lawyer is the prosecutor not the defence lawyer um, and there's plenty of other differences between um, you know the attitude towards infidelity you know in the in this film it's looked as you know as glamorous and you know not acceptable but you know whereas the code strictly said you know you had to uphold the institution of marriage um, and how the film ends is slightly different in the postcode version to the pre-code version. Um, I mean, Indicator don't include the 38 version, but you certainly get a taste of it. And you could argue it's maybe just as well um, they didn't include it because it looks kind of a lot less... Um, kind of pithy and cynical and it's much more straight down the middle 
Um, there's not a lot of kind of subversive stuff going on because again it's 1938 rather than 1933 and we all know the code came in in 34 um, and then we get a short um, war department documentary film that James Whale well shot um, classification of enlisted men from 1942 which is a 12 minute piece following four recruits as they go through the classification process um, on the way to no doubt getting killed in World War II um, so despite its short running time but it's a long 69 minutes but in a good way um, and again it's just packed with excellent stuff wonderful performances wonderful shots um, and wonderful subversion by James Whale um, and if you want to see The Wizard of Oz before he became a wizard um, it is a really good um, chunky part for Frank Morgan um, just a wonderful release um, it, is, it is rated PG for mild violence, domestic abuse references and sex references so if you can if you can take that kind of shocking material um, this is just a wonderful release um, from Indicator. So that's The Kiss Before the Mirror from 1933. Please let me know if you've seen The Kiss Before the Mirror um, and what you think of it. Or if you've seen the 1938 um, version, which is called Wives Under Suspicion, which again sounds um, exactly what the film seems like. So thanks very much for watching this random review. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films. Sing farewell.